This lady is a number one New York Times best-selling novelist, and she writes inspirational stories for millions of readers. And her brand new novel, The Baxters, a prequel, is the first book of the Baxter family saga and the perfect novel to introduce the new TV series starring Roma Downey. So I want to introduce you today to Karen Kingsbury. What is this uh, novel about and how did God guide you to write it? Well, you know, I'd written about 20 plus novels about the Baxters. This goes back to about, gosh, 2001, maybe, where my first book was Redemption. So people who know the Baxter family and love them, they started with the book Redemption. But there are so many new readers. And I've kind of sprinkled the Baxters into some of my recent standalone novels so they can catch up with them. But if you, I felt like we needed a new beginning a place where people could just kind of jump in and go, all right, I want to know more about this family. So the Baxter's a prequel takes place three years before Redemption. And it really, it is the new book one. The book Redemption was, like I said, was formerly the first book with the Baxter's. And it was about Carrie Baxter finding out that her husband was having an affair. Uh -huh. And it, it's the theme there is love is a decision. Even though her family is saying, you know, biblically, you have an out, like you don't need to stay with this guy. And, and he wasn't wanting to stay. He, he was wanting to stay with the girl he was having an affair with. And, uh, you know, she just decided that wasn't who she wanted to be. She wanted to fight for her marriage, which, you know, and sometimes in certain cases, that's really the right response. Other times, if there's abuse or whatever, that, that wouldn't be the right response. But for her, she really wanted to fight for it. And eventually um, her husband does kind of come around. I can, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler, but something tragic happens to him in the process dealing with the affair. And uh, so he doesn't, he doesn't make it. So he ends up, we don't, we lose him in the, in that book, but this book, the Baxter's a prequel is the day that Carrie and Tim are mar getting married. It's their wedding day. And so everything takes place on that day. There are terrible storms in the forecast. Um, tornadoes are in the forecast and she's wondering is this a sign like isn't i mean he's the right guy right lord <laughs> you know so that's happening and then there's some conflicts and stress between the sisters there's four sisters and a brother in the baxter family and the mom is like what is this unsettling that i feel like lord you know and it's not just about tim there's just other things and and something really dramatic happens even after the wedding between ashley another one of the sisters that everyone loves and Landon, a guy who she's like, has been in her life for a long time, but Ashley was in a terrible car accident and she was a car crossed the line. She didn't do anything wrong, but the young kid she was driving home was killed. So she's got her own tragedy. She's like, within it all kind of culminates on this wedding day. The beauty of it is the power of faith and family in the midst of what really feels like an ominous day. So it's that, it's like John 16, 33, at work where, you know, Jesus says in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. I love that. I love that. So now you're doing the TV series out of this book. You know, what role did Roma Downey play in it? Well, Roma is the executive producer. She was the one who called me many years ago now and said, uh, Karen, I am reading these books and I would love your, you know, to have your blessing to make them into a TV show. And that was just, that was like a miracle in and of itself, because back in 2000, when I started writing them, my dad was always my biggest fan. You know, he just loved my books. And I came back from a flight to, to um, Missouri, just one flight. And the Lord had given me all of the Baxter's first five books on this one flight. It was like a miracle, feeling like I was on holy ground at 30,000 feet. And I came home and I told my dad all about it. And I, he was just, he was just amazed. He was like looking over my notes and got kind of tears in his eyes. And he said, you know what? This needs to be a TV show. I had, haven't even written book one at this point, right? He's like, this needs to be a TV show. He said, Karen, you know who should do it is that touched by an angel lady, that Roman Downey. And I said, well, dad, that's a great idea. Do you have her number? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, 
Uh, fast forward to where I'm getting that phone call from Roma Downey and my agent had connected her. And so she was calling me and my dad was in heaven by then, but I was like, Lord, I hope he has a front row seat to see that he was right. That that touched by an angel lady is the one. So she's the executive producer and she is also playing the role of Elizabeth, the matriarch of the Baxter family. And she does an amazing job. Three seasons are filmed and they're in the can and people need to storm the gates of Amazon prime because they own it. Amazon purchased MGM that just happened. It closed about a month ago. And so now Amazon owns it. And I don't even think they know they have it, but as they, as the dust settles, they'll figure out they've got it and they should be putting it on the air, but I don't know when. So I'm I'm thinking if we just all say like, you know, at Amazon prime that, Hey, please air at the Baxters, then we'll start getting the show sooner than later. (laughs) Well, you know, we'll be promoting it right here. So I, I need to know. I've never, you know, met, never met Roma Downey. What is she like in person? Well, Roma is just what you see is what you get. Gentle, tender, kind-hearted, humble. You know, she's just really, I mean, I've, I've had the, the privilege of going over to her house. You know, she's lives on Malibu Beach. So it's a gorgeous view and, and, um, and having salads on her back porch and just visiting and talking and just hearing her heart. And knowing that she really, she really believes so strongly that people need an alternative type show. So, you know, a family show, like a, this is us or that kind of thing, but something that will speak to us who also have faith. Now, of course, not everyone in the Baxter family has that strong faith. That's part of the conflict, but the parents are devoted to the Lord and to each other. And now their kids are young adults and they're finding their way um, with relationships and struggles and jobs and whatnot. And, it's really like your family or my family. I mean, it's what people resonate with when it comes to the Baxters is that, you know, it feels like our family. Yeah. The, the, the woman who stars in the role um, of the Baxter prequel, um, what is so magnificent and special about this woman? Nasia Mulcary, the one who's getting married that day. Yes. Yeah. She's amazing. And the thing that's really really kind of the part of Carrie's story that people are drawn to is that she had a first love who truly loved her and everyone expected that they would get married. He lives just three doors down. His name is Ryan, but he, um, there was a moment he was a, he had become a pro football player and there was a very big misunderstanding where it seemed he had moved on with another girl. And that wasn't the case. It was a trainer talking to, it was completely misunderstood but that's what caused Carrie to just say it's over. Like we, I have to move on because I can't trust this guy. Um, and that was not true. So that was, everyone knows that wasn't true, but she didn't know that. So she's marrying this, you know, the, the guy who kind of came along next, which was Tim, but on her wedding day, Nancy, I, Ryan goes to her house to say goodbye to her. And that's the thing that is going to, it's just this wild scene. It's pouring rain. And Ryan shows up on her wedding day to say, you know, I had to see you one more time when you were still Carrie Baxter. Uh, people are going to love that scene. And I think it's going to, I would love to see a movie one day made on the Baxter's prequel to kind of prepare us for the TV show. And you know what? That's a prayer again said, and it's yes. going to happen. <laughs> yes. So we, we put it there. So, you know, while God was downloading these books inside of you, what kind of joy were you feeling? Oh my goodness. Just such a, an incredible, it's almost like God gives these stories to me like a movie in my heart. And so I get this like, Oh my goodness, this is going to be so, this is going to help so many people. It's going to be, people are going to love it. I can see it. And so then it's just, it's crazy. Cause if you see a movie, you can always say, Hey, Karen, you should go see this movie. But when it's a movie in my heart, I have to write it first before you can see it in your heart. And then it's going to take more years before we can actually see it on a, on a you know, big screen or a TV screen. So it's, it's so much joy and so much anticipation kind of all, you know, swirling together. And uh, it just, it's just beautiful. Like I, I really truly feel like the first reader when I'm writing, I feel like I, God's giving me this story and I just get to kind of, you know, translate it out onto the page. And, and then, you know, it's through him. For him, you know, it's it's for his glory. So, Macy, what did you like most about your role in the Baxter series? I think the the most special part about it was um, I've read all of these books in high school, 
So I knew these characters so deeply. And so, I mean, they were like real to me. They were family. And um, I remember even when I did my audition, I told the casting directors, I was like, I love these characters so much that I accidentally prayed for them like in high school when I was going to sleep at night. Like now I'd have to remember like, Oh yeah, these aren't real. Um, and I don't think I'm alone in that. I think a lot of Karen fans feel that way, like feel like these are real people. And so getting to step into, especially Ashley's shoes, Ashley was always my favorite character. Um, when I heard that they were doing this show, I called my manager and I was like, I have to audition. And not only do I have to audition, but I have to audition for Ashley. Like she is just, I mean, she's my favorite. And I think I know a lot of people feel that way. So it was intimidating a little bit to step in her shoes because I know she's a fan favorite. But I also just love, I love her story of redemption. I mean, I love that it's not, there's nothing cookie cutter about Ashley's life. It is, she has, you know, kind of gone to the pit and, dealing with, you know, feelings of shame and not good enough and not worthy. And you get to see her walk that out and you get to see her find redemption. And that is just one of my favorite, that's probably, I mean, my favorite thing to tell of what God can do is redemption. So to get to live that out through Ashley is, I mean, was a dream for sure. Um, Tell us a little bit about your faith journey through this. Ah, that's a really good question. It's been a long time. I've been writing about the Baxters now for, you know, more than 20 years. And still, when I talk about them, people say, oh, the Baxters, I have them on my prayer chain at church. <laughs> it's like, I'm like that's okay. great. I'm, I'm always reminding people that, you know, they're, they're fiction, but I, I do the same thing. So, you know, I'll, I just, it's, it's the journey of faith has been one that's been really beautiful. My dad used to tell me uh, there are no autograph lines in heaven. So you are just making friends. And he would always say, you know, don't believe it. Like the hype, whether it's somebody having a problem, you know, if if it's, yes, I mean, always, you always want your next book to be better than the last book. So but keep your humility and don't ever, ever believe that it's all about you because it never is. So the faith journey has been where early on I was like concerned, where did the book hit on the bestsellers list? Like how is it going to be? better than last time. And how do we just like those numbers games. And I really felt the Lord saying, don't go there. This isn't about that. Write these books because I'm asking you to write them. People will, you're going to meet people where I never would have known what they were going through. And they're going to read one of these books, like the Baxter's prequel, and their life is going to be changed. And they're going to be drawn into a deeper walk with God, or they're going to be wanting to reconnect with someone that they lost in their life. And that's not me. That's God doing that. So it doesn't matter what number is put on that. You know, yes, they're usually, you know, they're usually top 10 New York Times bestselling books and some have hit number one. That's great. But that's not the point. So I don't check those lists anymore. I just don't look. I stopped doing that a long time ago. And uh, recently, the Lord helped me to see that I could redefine the word release. So this book is released tomorrow. And the world would see that as it's released to the world. But I really am taking that now as this book is being released to the Lord. Like I've done my part and now I can just give it to him. And what happens next is all him. Clearly you are such an inspiration to so many people. I can, I can just tell, I can just to millions that are reading your books. Um, So what can we expect from Karen in the future? Well, you know, I've got, Uh, another book coming out. So next year at this time, I have just once coming out. And that is a a first time I've ever done a period piece that's set against the backdrop of World War II. And it's, there's a woman in the Baxter saga named Ervil. And Ervil is uh, in an Alzheimer's care facility. And Ashley, one of my Baxter characters, really finds her faith again, working with Ervil. Ervil, you know, her husband's been gone for many years, but she thinks he's out fishing with the boys. And she's just having peppermint tea with the girls. Like she's just genteel and she's, you know, in her, in her late eighties, but she um, made such an impact on Ashley. And I thought, you know, what about her love story with Hank and how would that have looked? And so God just gave me this really beautiful love story, said it in the world war two. And I'm just, I'm writing that now, but it'll be out next year. And this is so exciting. Uh, My book, a thousand tomorrows is going to be on a TV show. That'll be on pure flicks at the end of this year. It's going to have six one-hour episodes for season one. And Tyler Russell, my writing partner, and I uh, have 
we're, we're the screenwriters. So we, I've gotten to move my writing into screenwriting, which is so exciting because who better to put that story onto a script than the one who God gave it to. So it's uh, me and Tyler and he's, Tyler's also our son, our oldest son. So he and I are a writing team when it comes to screenwriting and our first big TV show will come out the end of this year called A Thousand Tomorrows. Well, you know, you got to come back and talk about that. <laughs> I know, I know, I really do. It's, it's going to be so exciting. It's such a, it's such a beautiful story. It's kind of my walk to remember. It's that kind of a vibe. What, Karen, what do you want to leave the audience with today? You know, I think one of the messages of the Baxters is just that there's always a second chance for you. There's always, a, as long as you're breathing, then the greatest thing that God has for you has not yet happened. So, you know, some chapters in our story, like I always say, write, write a bestseller with the days of your life. Love well, laugh often, look for the miraculous in the day, in the daily minutes and moments, and, and live for Jesus and watch and see the bestseller that will happen with the days of your life. So that's kind of the, in a nutshell, what the lessons I've learned from the Baxters. And as people pick up the Baxters prequel, which is now the new book one, so you can just start there, they're going to see those lessons played out. Um, on my website, there's a beautiful trailer like a, it's like a movie trailer, but it's a book trailer. So if you want to get a little bit of a feeling for what you're going to get in the Baxter's prequel, just go to karenkingsbury.com. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, so much for uh, coming on today and talking about your books and your and the upcoming series. Um, and everybody's got to get on Amazon. It's Amazon Prime, right? And request yes. it. Let's, we got to request get, it and we got to back right. her. We got to back her because it's going to be <laughs> wonderful. And you know, something like this is going to bless your life by watching it. So um, thank you everyone for joining us today, Karen. Thank you so much. God bless you in your endeavor with us. Thank you, Nancy. We look forward to being with you again. Thank you for watching the call. We hope you learned more about Jesus through this video. You can have a relationship with Jesus. Just invite him into your life. Repent of your sins ask for forgiveness, and make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Until next time, may the Lord be with you. For more information about this ministry, go to the call with thecallwithnancysabato.com where we are leading you to Christ through stories and teaching.